Alright, well let's get started man. My name is Tobin Ellis and for the next few minutes I'm going to talk to you not just about what this equipment does, but why we designed it the way that we did. Really quick background, so for the last 25 years I've been bartending and building bars all over the world, all the way down to Johannesburg, South Africa, Kathmandu, Nepal, Hawaii, and all over the US. Dive bars, nightclubs, hotels, Vegas resorts, pretty much you name it, I've been back there and I've either worked behind it or I've helped open it. And the biggest problem with designing a bar for me has always been that you can't really design a bar up until this equipment was made that did the job it was supposed to do, which is what? What's the job of this square foot of space? What's its real job? Where are my operators at? What? Profit. Not just top line revenue, not just making drinks, it's profit. Because food is amazing, we all love food, but everybody knows you don't make money from food. You really don't, you can't. I mean, who walks into a restaurant, has a meal and goes, Man, the steak was amazing, can we get another round for the table please? It doesn't happen like that, but it happens with drinks. And you get that magical word flow through, and that's where all your profit comes from. But the problem is, is every time that I'm constructing a drink in this factory, which is what a bar is, it's a factory, I've got to walk one, two, three, five, eight steps to grab what I need to make the cocktails. So that's the uh, efficiencies issue that we dealt with, the problem we tried to solve. The second issue we dealt with was these poor bartenders and ergonomics. Who about here is bartended? Like really bartender, raise your hand, let me see it. Here's the things that we saw on equipment that drove us crazy that we tried to solve and we think maybe we've done it. Number one, sharp corners. You cut your clothes, you cut yourself, you bruise yourself on all the sharp corners. There's equipment literally that will slice you, that will cut you. Bartenders talk about this to me all the time. They said to me, Tobin, please, please get rid of these sharp corners. So if you look, we've got rounded corners all over the place. That's gone, that's great. But the biggest problem we try to solve is how can we get the bartender closer to the guest into their own workstation? Because the typical equipment that's designed has bartenders bartending for eight hours like this. And people are kind of nodding their heads or whatever, but well, let's do this. I want everyone right now, take your arms, put them out like this and bend over. I'm gonna stop you right now to do it. Come on, let's do it. Everyone go like this. Come on, get out there. All right, like this. Stretch more, stretch. For eight hours, nobody moves. <laughs> It's not so funny now, is it? So the first thing we did is we shored up the ice bin. Still fits a standard pool plate, the 30 to the 42. But we shored it up about three to four inches, and we raised it up so when the bartender's scooping, they're not bending as much. And now, instead of bartending like this, I'm like this. I'm gonna shake your hand, and I can serve this as part of the bar being right here. So what would we do about all the bottles then? Well, instead of pushing the bartender back, we just butterfly the well out. I've still got 30 US liters that I can fit in this configuration, 30. At the same time, I can fit 12 750 juice bottles or nine storing pools in this insulated jockey box. It's not part of my portable ice. So I've got it separated out, insulated and drained. And if you need a soda gun, there's an optional piece that's at the other end of the public booth, they're showing it. It's got a little drawer for the manifold. And it clocks back into the back against the die wall so it's not sticking out in the bartender's way. I remember about seven or eight years ago I was building some restaurants with mellow mushroom pizza makers and I got in and saw the wells and they've got this manifold piece that comes up like this tower, this Orwellian tower from the book 1984 in the middle of the station. I'm like, how do I bartend with that? Hold on, I'll be right back, I've got to get a glass. Got my glass, I'm coming back. It interrupted the flow of the bartender. The mistake sometimes when we design bars is we think in isolation that this is bartending, but it's not. This is bartending. It's constant movement, and I need all of these things close, but I need to be able to access them with as few steps as possible. So what we tried to build wasn't two-step bartending or one-step bartending. It was zero-step bartending. I'm right here. I don't need to move. I can grab everything I need in reach. And now that it's 2015, one of the things that I need to reach is a Negroni. Because it's nearly noon. I've got to have a cocktail right now. Who's had a Negroni before? Anyone? You know, what's, what's in a Negroni? Who knows it? Boom! Campari, gin, and sweet vermouth. Now I'm going to talk about this cocktail while I make it. 
for a very important reason, profitability. The biggest mistake you see in America and in general is you're designing drinks that quench thirst. That's crazy. You're insane. You should be doing the opposite. Great drinks create thirst, they don't quench it. What's the smartest drink ever invented? Lemonade. Because we were all sold, oh, the hot summer day, I want a refreshing glass of lemon juice. What does it do? You gotta have a second drink just to quench your thirst from the lemonade. Well, that's because of the bittering ingredients, the acid. So, this Negroni in it has Campari, sweet vermouth, and gin. And there's two bittering elements in there, actually three. And when you drink a bitter drink, it creates saliva that goes down into your stomach, activates your gastric juices, and it creates hunger and thirst, which translates to sales. Ice cream drinks, pre-mixed sugary, mixed margarita mixes, all that stuff, you're insane for carrying that in a bar because what you're doing, besides causing cancer and having a not very tasty drink, is you're actually killing your guests' thirst and appetite. This is why the classic and craft cocktail movement has caught on again. So what happened to it? Why did it die? And I'm getting to a very important piece of equipment by way of this little story, is people stopped drinking vermouth. Does anybody know why? The real reason why, don't tell me James Bond, please, why people stop drinking vermouth in this country. I know, who else knows that hasn't heard this before? Anybody? What is vermouth? Wine, fortified wine. It's wine fortified with spirits, so it lasts longer, but it's still wine. What happens to wine when you leave it out at room temperature? Oxidizes, turns into vinegar, you can't drink it anymore. Where is almost every bottle of vermouth in most bars in this country? Back bar, speed rail, room temperature. The reason why people stop drinking vermouth in the United States is because we stop taking care of it. It's spoiled, it's actually rotten, it's turned. That's why we got rid of the move. So what did we do? Well, underneath our drain board with an optional poly cutting board, we put two low temperature refrigerated drawers. And I'll get to the top one in a second, but the bottom one, boom! Chilled the move as it should be. So now I can make this delicious, gorgeous little cocktail. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in equal parts of sweet vermouth. Plymouth gin from England and Italian Campari. Make a little baby one. And now we're gonna throw in some ice. And the beautiful thing about this station, even though I'm close to the, the ice well, I've got the opportunity to have up to three or four separated ice bins, which you can see in the mirror, for an ice program. I've got nugget ice, I've got pillow, I've got large cube, boom. And guess what? I'm in a hotel, I'm in a nightclub, I don't need three kinds of ice, no problem, these are move. They're also notched in about five different places so you can decide, your clients can decide how much of each type of ice we want. I want two bins, I want three, I want four, I want one. Totally customizable, but stays in place. Top drawer on this refrigeration unit over here. It is the only drawer system in existence right now that is NSF rated for open food storage. Why is that so important? Where my bartender is at? Anybody here bartend with a fresh program? Anybody? Isn't it fun when you've got to make fresh cocktails when you have to go into the beer cooler, grab out three or four cameras that are stacked on top of each other behind the beer, pull them out, set them down, pull the lid off, get the... Uh, uh. <laughs> Instead, all we've got to do is go right here, open this drawer with one hand, I'm gonna grab some basil, stick it in here, boom, done, closed. You shave those 15 seconds off of every cocktail that you make off your menu times four bartenders, times eight hours a night, times 14 shifts a week, times 52 weeks in the year. As a consultant for 17 years who is always tasked with profitability, I can tell you right now, you're talking about six figures in top line revenue. You're flushing down the toilet because you're putting all your ingredients, your mise en place, somewhere back in your back in your beer cooler instead of right at the bartender's fingertips. So that is the problem that we solve right here. Low temperature, wind line pans, backups. You can come and check this out in a little bit and put anything. In fact, we're working to modify to get 10 line pans in here. Right below it, I've got vermouth, as we mentioned. I've got backup juices. If you're building for a hotel environment, I'm not sure if it's in your process, but when I design for hotels and resorts, I don't just think about the bar. I think operationally, I think, wait a minute. 
before I suggest this program, where they're going to have to store that backup juice. Because if it's going to be in a room that's 900 yards away, we've got to figure out how that's going to work in service and operations and affect their top and bottom line. So now I don't have to send someone to go get it because I've got it right here at my fingertips. All right, so we've got a Negroni right here. Let's get one of these big, beautiful ice cubes. Can I get a big ooh and an ah for the big ice cube? And then an ah. Oh. Isn't that amazing? There we go, there. <laughs> Boom. Okay. 24 inch glass chiller down to negative 10 degrees. Ice program right behind the bartender, not in a back cooler somewhere. Oh, this is going to be good. It's like breakfast. <laughs> Now I'm done with my tools, I've got a glass washer right here, the PKBR24. Um, I don't work for Perlick, I work with Perlick. For 10 years before we started this deal, I've been placing Perlick. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of companies that make nice equipment. The only glass washer I will place for a client anymore, the only one is this one right here. I'm not talking about a salesperson, I'm talking about a bartender and an operator. I've been an operator three times. This is the only machine that I will place. You want to talk about it later, I'll tell you, I'll give you five reasons why that's the only dishwasher I'll use. So I've got my Negroni, and now that I've finished making it, we'll look at over here. I've got my tool caddy. Let's talk about the word that came out of the kitchen that bartenders stole that makes money on the bar. It's a French term. What is it? Mise en place. I've got my mise en place right here for my ingredients, for my herbs and all my fruits, but I've also got it for my tools. And how we did that in what my friend Dave likes to call the water park for bartenders, this tricked out sink right here, is I've got a compartmentalized multi-depth tool caddy. Here, we took an ice cream dipper well and we played with it a little bit. We tweaked it, and what happens now is, when I need a spoon, it's a Japanese $60 really tall and for no reason whatsoever except to impress your spoon, I've got a deep slot for it back here. It's always there, that's its home, that's where it lives. When I need my hot bone strainer, it's in slot number one, that's where it lives. Why is that so important? Where are my footballers at? Who plays soccer here? Who plays soccer or any field team sport? You know if you were any good at it, the only way you can be good is you've got to have your head up and your eyes out on the field at all times. If you're serious about bartending, if you're serious about making money for yourself or your operator as a bartender, your head's up. If you bartend like this, you're toast. You've got to be able to see the entire room, eyeballs, drinks, trash on the bar, who's in the parking lot coming in, what's going on in the room. So you can't look at your tools, that's why you need everything in one spot. And what do bartenders do with the tools right now? I'm a guy in the city, they've got the old hooks and little clasps and they've got the old jars of dirty nasty water that they keep sticking them in, have you seen this? They're all over the bar top. We've got a health code compliant, circulated water tool caddy that keeps each tool exactly where you need it and you can customize these little pieces and have as many little sections as you want or you don't want. So boom. What else we got on the sink right here? You guys all see these popping up in bars now, don't you? The glass rinses. Do you know why bartenders want these now? Does anyone understand why this is happening? Because it's happening all over the place. Have you seen these yet? Not for beer glasses, but for bars, for front bar. The reason is because when I start using fresh ingredients, especially most cocktails that have sugar water, sticky, simple syrup, and fresh herbs, when I'm done shaking, which I'll do right now, we'll make a... Uh, We'll take a Brazilian caipirinha and we'll reef it off with some fresh basil. So I'm going to put in some of this cachaça, grab my fresh lime juice right here. Oops, morning jitters. And I'm going to put in some uh, low glycemic agave nectar instead of simple syrup. Grab in some of my ice. How are we doing today? Oh yeah. What happens is when I'm done shaking this and I strain it out, is the combination of the agave nectar and the basil is going to stick to the side of the tin. And sticking under a sink for an hour, it's not going to come out. It's stuck inside there, so then the next drink is going to have some basil in it, a little bit of sugar that I don't want. So what bartenders do is they stick their hands in and scoop it out, which is not so great, is it? So instead what they like now are these high pressure glass rinses that have been repurposed from, the, from a beer rinser to use. It's basically a high pressure little washer for the tools. It gets sticky things out of jiggers as well. The problem is, is that everyone's retrofitting their third market MacGyvering and they're putting them up in scupper rails, peanut rails and all over the place. Guess what health inspectors doing? Ripping them out. Yanking them out. It is the number one. I build all over the country. 
like a lot of you guys do, not just one market all over the country. It is the number one thing I see health inspectors hot button right now. They hate these things because they're not being done consistently with the same building code for the plumbers and the same way they're being installed. So we've created an NSF approved version on our sink that's got a glass rinse right up front. And we've got hot and cold foot pedals. If you don't want foot pedals, we've got knee pedals as well, right in here, so either way. All right, so next cocktail. So glad I've got three kinds of ice here. Boom. First compartment's got my hot on strainer in it. Fourth compartment with my tea strainer. Now we've got this fresh, delicious little beauty right here. Mm. Boom. Back in its home, back in its home. And now I'm right back to the cooler. Grab me a pretty little leaf. Grab a spoon again and we will just put that right in there. So we've got a Negroni and a fresh basil caipirinha, Brazilian cocktail. One, zero to one step bartending for everything. Everything kept at proper temperature. And the best part was the entire time I did this, I wasn't banging my knees on one little bar on the speed rail. I wasn't bartending like this. I'm a happy bartender. Why should you care about that? Because one of the things I'm assuming you're trying to sell to your clients is why they should buy from you. You know it goes way beyond the equipment because you're all selling the same equipment. It's about your ability to service them and what do they really want. They want to make more money. If you can come to them and you can show them, and it's true, we've proven it. Think about it. I'm a factory worker, right? I told you that. I'm building little widgets that just happen to be really tasty alcoholic widgets. I'm building these widgets. But why do you want me to be happy? Every single company in the world preaches people are our number one resource. Our people are the most important. But behind a bar was the last time when you built a bar and you thought about the bartender and then for 40 hours having a bartend like this and cut themselves up and hate their stations. You go ask a bartender next time you have a drink, what do you think of your station? Honestly, what do you think of it? Not one you built, go to another bar. I tell you, I do it all the time, they get the same answer every time. I hate it. Who designed this? Who built it? It sucks. My back, my carpal tunnel, my knees, the back of the knees are hurt. Finally now, you've got an ability to go to your clients and say, guess what? You're going to have the happiest bartenders on the block. And happy bartenders mean happy guests because they're going to be more engaged, they're going to move faster, they're going to sell more drinks, they're going to stay longer, they're going to want to work for you, it's all going to work. Because you took an investment and gave them equipment that's designed for speed, built for comfort. This is the new, he said narcissistically, Tobin Ellis Cocktail Station by Perlet. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, can we the players? Come on. Come have a look. Sniff the green supply. Can't take a sip, sorry. <laughs> right, that's a four.